And we are back, and we just finished watching 2017's You Were Never Really Here, rated R, with a runtime of one hour and 29 minutes. In celebration of Women's History Month, we are looking at films directed by female directors. This one is actually written and directed by Lynn Ramsey, who got this from a book by Jonathan Ames. This is the story of a man who is very broken, very damaged. Yeah, he seems to be suffering from both childhood trauma and trauma Adult, experienced during adulthood uh, trauma during a war. Pro pro I mean, probably someplace in the Middle he East. Wasn't a war. Never really specified. Wasn't a war. Well, he was a soldier. He was a soldier. Yeah, so and there were lots the refrigerator. Was it the refrigerator with the women and children in it? I mean, he, that must have been. That was like, something else. That I think maybe I, that was a I, I get the impression that maybe he was a policeman of some kind or, or something. I don't know. That was additional trauma. So right. basically, that. throughout his life, he's seen he has seen the worst of humanity. Abuse. And yeah, yeah. And I think that he currently freelances as someone who extracts young people, specifically girls, out of really traumatic situations, maybe as a way of cleansing himself and healing the child that had to live through all of that. Yeah, I mean, he seems to have specialized in, uh, I guess, rescuing girls from, I'm assuming, sex trafficking. Yes, yes, that's, I mean, it's, there isn't too much shown but it's definitely implied yeah i'm gonna go around the table and get impressions Gigi, what did you think of this movie i didn't really care about it no did you have did you like anything about it not really no i was just really bored you were really bored okay olive g what did you think i thought it was good yeah what was your favorite scene was it at the end when you were laughing um no no what was did you have a favorite scene no Neither a character. Neither a character. But you were okay with this film? Yeah. Okay. What about you? I mean, I wasn't bored. It had a bit of a slow burn in the beginning. It seemed to be leading up to something interesting, but I I don't know. I, I feel like it just sort of meandered to its end. Okay. It didn't, it didn't to me, it didn't really nail any ending. And, and you, you, prior to us recording, you, you read what, like, the meaning of the ending of the movie was and I don't know I didn't buy it okay I disagree but that's okay um, everything is about your own interpretation and the experiences that you bring to something I actually really really liked this movie a lot I the oh my only complaint with it was the, the excessive music, music. <laughs> yeah. that really annoyed me it's funny because in some films it doesn't bother me and in others it does and i think in this one it really bothered me because i felt like because of the subject matter because of the lead character's personality you didn't need to fill every space with noise and that bothered me a lot i i could see where you're coming from i'm get it i also could see where the the filmmaker was coming from they were trying to like because it wasn't just it wasn't just music. It wasn't like you know random songs. It was it was ambient, like industrial sort of clanging and 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 noises like that. It was more it was more noise than music. Well, no, I mean to me, it sort of re it represented the the noise in his head. Yeah, that yeah, it that, was that's, never quiet. Right, and it was he was always in turmoil. But even like the older songs that probably harken back to his youth as a child growing up in the household where the mother was obviously a victim of spousal abuse it, it just felt like it just felt like too much but again i i agree with you i i understand the filmmakers doing it but it just to me it took away from the character because to me the character is someone who is broken to the point of almost being unhinged and I'm sure that happens in a, in a in the brain of a person like that. But as an audience, unless you're looking at things through his eyes and his perspective, I don't think you needed that in the in the movie. And I think quieter moments would have really helped here. And the other thing that bothered me was 
I just couldn't hear a lot of the dialogue. Yeah. Some of the, oh well, God. not all of it, that but some that of it. That was the, infuriating. Yeah, some of the dialogue was, was very, mumbling? very low. And just, I mean, I had you turn up the volume numerous times, and I still couldn't understand what was being said. Yeah, everybody was mumbling. Yeah, and that infuriates me too because it's like I'm trying to follow this thread of a story. This isn't this isn't a, a going from point A to point B type of story. So you really kind of have to be aware and be able to hear things and things happen in here. And I'm just like, what what was just said? I don't I don't know what was just said, and that bothered me. But other than that, I thought it was. Really interesting. I thought Joaquin Phoenix was just absolutely stunning in this. Just really good. No, he's he's good. He he's is a, he's usually always really good. really good. But yeah. this really, there was something about his performance here that really spoke to me. And just he, he seems talented at playing broken people. People, yes, yes. He definitely has an affinity for that. I don't know if it's from personal experience. I mean, he also has gone through a lot of trauma. I'm sure, but. Um, and he, he just he just looks he looks broken. He's, yes. he's got that hair lip thing. He's he's got the weirdest shoulder blades. <laughs> like this is the this is probably the third movie I've seen where he just has no shirt on and he doesn't have a shirt on and his body is just freakish to look at. <laughs> You know, it's funny that you bring that up because we, I don't know if you sat for the whole I, thing. I, I sat through the, I, I saw the scenes where he was in the beginning of, of the master. Okay. And yes. yeah, his body looks, it's bizarre looking. <laughs> it's like a Mike Mignola drawing of a skeleton. It's, it's, and then I saw well, Joker that one, too. He's and, more, and, in that one, he's more thinner and here he's yeah. a little bit. Yeah. And this one he's bulked out. up, but his, he's still. I don't know. He's asymmetrical. Uh, his shoulders and maybe he had an injury or something. Possibly. But yeah, but this, the, the master, he, he, the, uh, that's, there's a scene of him on standing on the beach where his, his body just looks so weird. Oh, and, and he's jacking off into the water. Uh, and then, and then in Joker, his body was just gross to look at. Too. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't want to mean the Joaquin Phoenix. <laughs> I think he's. I think he's proud of his gross body. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's just like it's kind of jarring, but it makes it you know it works. Yeah, it works because you're like, okay, this is a guy who's been through something. Yeah, mentally, physically, there's just something. Yeah, something off. And and like I said, he's really good at playing that sort of that broken man. Like you said, he he did a great job here. I just I don't know uh, the, something about something about the story just never like I felt like it was, it, it took off. It was a slow burn. It started moving at it. Things were happening. Things were progressing, and and then it just sort of petered out to me. Hmm. And and then and then at the end there was the whole. I guess it was sort of like a dream sequence or. I don't know if it's a dream sequence or just some sort of daydream. I, I feel like we could spoil this. This is from a few years back. Yeah, I, he the, the he's sitting in the diner with the girl that uh, um, he sort of rescued and deciding where to go. And she walks away. You know, she's I don't know. He doesn't know. And then she gets up and, and leaves the booth. And then he's just sitting there and he pulls out a gun, and blows his brains out. But nobody reacts. The waitress has blood all over her face. She just puts the check on the table. And then suddenly the girl returns and she just taps him on the head and he sits up and the blood's all gone and everything's whatever. And she's like, okay, where are we going to go? It's a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yes, it's a beautiful day. And I, from the thing that you read, the, the whole thing was supposed to be that he was like, his life was meaningless, that like, it was almost like he was never there, which I guess, which obviously is the, you know, the title of the movie. But... The way the, the I mean the guy's life, I, I don't understand how he could have felt that way, considering what he did. He his his livelihood was rescuing girls from sexual exploitation, and then once he was done with that, he would go home and take, take care, care of his, his dependent mother. mother. Yeah. So if he was never there, he wouldn't be able to do all these things. He wouldn't be saving people's lives or doing any of that. So. I mean, I understand that mental illness, you don't see the big picture. You don't see the truth. 
it makes you have such a overwhelming sense of self-loathing that the world isn't reflected accurately in your mind. So yeah, I, I can understand how he would feel that way. But as an outsider looking in, maybe, I don't know, it, it just didn't click with me. And the, it, it, it all fell flat. The whole movie sort of like drizzled to a stop and that was it. Uh, I disagree. I think it was really well done. I think it's tough to take an existing property like a novel and then condense it into a certain time frame in a film. So you probably lose a lot of the story and a lot of the intention or of the story. But I think that Lynn Ramsey did a, a decent job here. I think that the movie moved fairly well. I think the imagery was maybe sometimes twofold. You have the scenes where he's kind of flashbacking back to his youth and he does a thing in his when he's a child where he wraps his head and his face in plastic almost to like suffocate himself to not be there in this excruciating time because as a child there's nothing he can do and you also see the mother as a young woman hiding under what looks like maybe a coffee table and then putting her fingers to her to her lips to sort of like just be quiet maybe if we stay quiet he won't notice us kind of thing and i think it tied in interestingly enough with the picture that he got from the girl's father it was like sort of like a polaroid and the girl's kind of doing the same position finger to the lips like shh, kind of thing and this whole sex trafficking thing i'm pretty sure is done in secret and so you have this whole thing of being sort of drowned by these horrible secrets as a child being the son of a victim of abuse but also the abuser so that as a child probably bled into his adult life he probably enlisted in whatever military service to help others and there's that scene where he gives that child a candy bar and that child runs and then is promptly shot to death for the candy bar which he witnesses obviously mm -hmm. so this is more trauma and then you see scenes of trauma with him uncovering what was it like a freezer or like a yeah, locker yeah like a freezer full of dead girls and children Young, yeah, yes. they, were, they were young. They yes, were. so again, these children could have been trafficked. These children could have just been coming into the country trying to sneak in, but met an untimely, gruesome death. And I'm sure that all stayed with him. And then just this line of work that he does, I doubt this is good for his mental health because I'm sure he's seeing things that are just beyond anything. And then... And he's doing, you know... Awful things, brutal, true. Brutal things. Like, I mean, his, his signature is beating people brutally with a ball-peen hammer. Yeah. One thing, that the film doesn't show any of this stuff. Really. Yeah. I mean... He, this you, is you, all you, just it, it's suggested. All, everything, is, everything is shot in a way where nothing really graphic the probably the most graphic is the imaginary imaginary shooting of himself well the guy's cut throat towards the end you'd never see his cut throat you just see him lying on the floor and he's got blood on his neck with the the, the big scar right like you, but don't, you don't uh, you don't what, see, I, what i'm saying is you never see right right the actual violence like even when he breaks into the house it's just people laying on the ground right right and him walking through and uh, the time when you do see him actually beating people up is through like a, it's through like a, a screen, yeah it's like a, a closed monitor. circuit camera so closed the circuit. angles are obscuring everything and it's and it's quick it's it's like boom 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 and he's done what do you give it uh i'm going to give this movie i think i would give it a seven i think at least for me it worked i think the imagery was interesting uh, there's that scene where because of trying to save this little girl nina he's put everyone in his periphery in danger and his mother gets killed and he goes to basically bury her and maybe even himself yeah, in the I'm water sure he was going to kill himself that's why his pockets are full of rocks but then he sees the girl drowning or 
going under and I think that motivates him to shake yeah. it off and, and, and try to find this child and try to save her. So I think at the end it makes sense and I think that he was crying before he shoots himself because maybe he just felt so terribly alone and worthless and, and whatever but then this girl represented some sort of redemption for him and maybe the possibility of maybe something better coming so yeah i think i would give this movie a seven i think i for me at least it worked it's it's only an hour and a half so it's not too long i think it's a good looking movie i mean it's not like sleek like nightmare alley or beautiful like spielberg's west side story but i I still think it's an interesting looking movie i think the story moved really well i think you have to really look at it to see the underlying themes in it and obviously if you read the book you probably have more insight inside color into what's really going on again the only complaint i had was the some of the audio was super low for me and then the constant noise and music again i understood it but it just bothered me and i couldn't get past that otherwise i probably would have given this an eight but for now i think i'll give it i'll just give it a seven Olive G, 1 to 10, what would you give this movie? 7. GG? A 5. A 5? Uh, I'd probably give it uh, like a 4.5. 4.5? Are you sure? It was a little bit less than okay. It was a little less, little bit less than average for me. I don't, like, it's, like I said, it just it fell flat. I mean, it, uh, it was almost all right. It could have been good, but it, for me, it, I don't know. It was a miss for me. Business. All right, all right. It, again, this is all just yeah. opinions and likes. So as we begin the month of March in celebration of Women's Month, uh, shout out to Lynn Ramsey. If you feel like watching this, you are never really there. It's streaming currently on Prime Video. And that's it from us. And we will come back with another review soon. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.